Hi and uh, welcome. My name is Christian Karl. I work as a test manager at Spotify. I've been doing that the last four years. But today we're going to do a presentation on uh, model-based testing as a methodology or a tool for, for your test automation process. Uh, I'm going to talk about GraphWalker specifically, which is an open source tool. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Linux as the demonstration platform while, I, while I'm doing the uh, presentation, but uh, that really doesn't matter to, to you guys. You can use any other platform, Mac or Windows or Linux, doesn't really matter. The only requirement is that you have uh, Java installed. So the first thing we need is a uh, model editor. Uh, the model editor is called YEd. It's from uh, YWorks. Uh, select the appropriate package for your uh, installer package for your platform. I've already done already done that, and uh, typing YEd, I will get the yed started this is what you get when you freshly have a freshly installed yed editor now uh, i don't like the 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 default so uh, i always select a more nicer looking node because when i click i don't think that these are looking that nice so i usually use these more nicer looking nodes I don't use these views either and I go to preferences I use tooltips something else than zero seconds and I dynamically adjust node size to label size that is what I want now if I connect the uh, nodes or vertices together like this after a while it would uh, will get tiresome to just uh, rearrange this manually so I like the layout tool that is provided with with uh, wired so uh, top to bottom let's see edges back loop routing yes and labeling hierarchic and uh, best and I click dock so now it's here or rather the play button is available which automatically lays out the uh, the uh, the graph for me uh, we also need to set up GraphWalker now since we're using Java and GraphWalker is uh, packaged in a standalone jar file the only and assuming that you have Java installed on your system the only thing you need is uh, really downloading the GraphWalker jar package so let's go find that one Graph Walker, um, yeah, Graph Walker download, and uh, here we have the uh, latest uh, standalone uh, package of uh, Graph Walker. I've already downloaded that one, so it's in my download folder. So, in order to run this, we need to have Java minus jar. Downloads graphhooker.jar, and if I type that, it will tell me to uh, use the option help or the subcommand help to get more options. So let's do our first test. Now, the test we're gonna do is uh, from the graphhooker examples repository on GitHub, so that's what uh, we're gonna end up in or two. Uh, but we're going to walk through the process. So uh, let's start with the first vertex or node, and it's going to be our start node. GraphWalker needs to know where we it should start executing the graph. Now colors doesn't really matter to GraphWalker, but for me, when I look at the design, it's really nice to see the green vertex, which indicates that this is the start point of the graph. But for GraphWalker, it's the word start that is really uh, the keyword here. Now, um, the test is actually uh, looking, searching for books and adding them to the uh, shopping cart on the Amazon uh, website. 
So the first thing we need to do is start the browser. And uh, what uh, a model really depicts here is the expected behavior of the system under test. So if we think from that perspective, if we start the browser, the expected behavior would then be, be of course, that we expect that the browser is up running. So a node really represents that expected behavior. So in this case, I would uh, call this vertex for browser has started. And then I can add my edge and type start browser. Now, this is really what GraphWalker is all about. It's 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 uh, executing pair of an edge followed by a vertex. Uh, an edge represents the transition. Uh, in in testing, we could uh, translate that into an action. We we do something. And uh, the uh, vertex means verify the result of the preceding action. So in our case, starting the browser would mean that in the vertex is where we write our code, our assertions that verifies that we actually have started the browser. Now, this is, uh, this is how it works. So if we would continue this test we would like to get to the Amazon site now I can't just do an arrow which hangs to nowhere so I always need a vertex to start with so in this case I expect to end up at the Amazon homepage if I give to the browser the Amazon oh Amazon home page URL. Now, uh, the next thing I would like to do is uh, when I have arrived at the Amazon home page is actually to do the start to, to do the real test, which is uh, searching for books and adding them to the shopping cart. So the first thing, the next thing I would like to do is to search for a book and to verify that I get a search result. So I'll start with the uh, expected outcome first and I'll type uh, verify the search results results there we go and here's the edge search for book uh, yeah, and the next thing I would like to do is, of course, adding the book to the shopping cart. Now, when I do that on Amazon, they give me sort of a page where they give me teasers so to other people bought similar books like this or that. So that is actually the edge I would, sorry, the uh, uh, that would be the expected behavior. So I would type in something like, Verify that Amazon displays people bought similar books. Uh, don't mind the typos I'm introducing here. Now, this is where I add a book. And yeah, so I actually added the book to the shopping cart, but uh, I would actually also ver go to the shopping cart and verify that I have the correct amount of and the correct book in the shopping cart. So the next node would be verify content of the shopping cart. And this edge would represent an action taking me to that place. So go to shopping cart. So let's uh, try 
using this model using GraphWalker. Now we save this uh, model as a GraphML file, <coughs> which uh, GraphWalker understands and can read. What GraphWalker will do is generating a walk through this model. Now this walk will be pretty straightforward. We just have we just follow the edges to the vertices until we can't go no more. So uh, doing this and printing the path on the standard output on this console here, uh, I will call Java minus jar mm, downloads graphwalker jar and I will give the command offline. Now this will generate a uh, one uh, uh, well, it will generate the um, path and, and print it out directly to the uh, my console here right now. So I need to specify where the model is. Uh, and it was called Amazon.graphmo. I also need to specify how I am going to walk this model. There are different strategies. And in this case, I'm going to just choose random. Uh, the strategy is not that meaningful at this time since we only have a straight path to follow. So it doesn't really matter what uh, what uh, generator path generator we are using. Uh, we also require a stop condition, and I'm going to specify. An it says here could not parse file. It contains white spaces. So. What GraphWalker, when it executes the test against, uh, let's say, a connected Java class, which will then actually execute the test automation code, it will translate the labels here to methods in uh, the connected Java class. So a uh, Java method is not allowed to have white spaces, uh, spaces in its method name. So we need to change that. So I'm going to do that real quick here, but I'm not going to, you're not going to have to see me do the complete model, but let me just do it the way I would present this um, or how a test automator would do this together with a tester. So let's say I'm a tester who has designed this. I don't really know about uh, connecting Java classes and things like that. I have a specialist for that and uh, he's the Java developer, which uh, I call the test developer or a, uh, engineer in testing or test automator, whatever you would like. Um, now you can take that piece of text and uh, move it into um, something called the data and description field. Now, usually a tester might write plain English or uh, uh, spoken language uh, when one uh, designs the model. And uh, it's nice to have that text still around. Now, I put that in the description field. And if I change this uh, label of this edge to a more programmatical uh, label, I would probably call it edge underscore start, where E underscore denotes an edge. And I'll do the same with this one. I move that one to the description field. And I say the underscore browser. <laughs> now, when I hover over the uh, vertex here, why add will tell, show me the tooltip, which is the field from the data dash description field. Now it's nice to have this one because it really tells the test automator what to expect uh, when verifying this uh, node. Now let me finish off the rest of the graph. Yes, so uh, now the model is uh, normalized uh, in terms of uh, graph worker syn syntax. So I have changed all the labels to uh, names that will uh, be accepted by, by Java. Now, if you implement uh, your test automation in some other language, you have to follow the syntax of, of uh, that language, of course. Now, 
this test now let's try to to run this one i need to save it so and uh, let's run it again and here's our first test now it's not a proper test because we're not actually running it this is sort of a dry run where graphwalker has automatically generated a test if you like from from the model now this path is uh, pretty much predictable because there is no other path possible through this model since it's a straight line but uh, nevertheless it's it's our first test now we can uh, expand this uh, model and uh, let me just uh, download uh, the proper model which this one is going to end up in and discuss that model more in, in detail. So uh, this is the sample model which we are going to uh, work with with the rest of the presentation and let me show you where you can get this one. Uh, let's go back to Graph Walker and uh, click on the demo link. If you end up in the home page, there's also a uh, link directly to the demo there. Um, the source code for the demo is at GitHub, so let's follow this link. Uh, we end up in the GraphWalker examples repo and let's fetch the uh, the model it's on the resources model and here we are chopping cart now click on the raw button and this is uh, the uh, graph ml file <coughs> sorry this is the graph ml file we want now Another way of doing it is uh, right click on that and save link as. Okay. So let's talk about generators or path generators. Uh, before I do that, I just want to show you uh, I'm not typing Java minus jar and then the path to the GraphWalker file all the time. I'm using a script that handles that for me. Uh, I just type GraphWalker uh, GV for that and it will then invoke the whole um, uh, command line for me. So it uh, looks like this. It's uh, really nothing special. Uh, it takes a string here, which is the command uh, options line options that I that I pass along. So, gv help would provide me with uh, with the command line subcommands that are available. Now, let's look at what's available for generators. We have four path generators that we can use for GraphWalker. Now, uh, the first one we can select or try to use is the uh, off uh, sorry the, the the random one and try that again uh, the last time we used a uh, model that only had one straight line now this model is a bit complicated it uh, it's uh, it has evolved so we have back loops so to speak so we can uh, actually create different permutations random means that if we're standing on an edge uh, sorry vertex uh, graphwalker would randomly choose the out edge. In this case we can't predict if we're going to choose this one or this one because we have the random generator. So let's use that. Uh, oh, we, well the order is not important here but I would do it anyway and edge cover edge 100 and here we are with a path through the model and this was quite a long one. Now if I run this again I will get a different path. This is a bit shorter. Now I can pipe this along to program that counts the number of rows that uh, GraphWalker spits out. This time I got 44, 56, 108 and it all is all due to the 
random path generator. Now, if you want to choose, if, you, if we're interested in the absolute so, uh, shortest path through this model, uh, we can uh, change the path generator from random to A star. Uh, A star is not the correct nam name for actually what the path generator does. Uh, it should really be sh called shortest all pairs. And every time I run this, it will create the same path. 32, 32. So A star really creates uh, uh, the shortest uh, path for us. But A star is, when the model gets a little bit bigger, uh, it really takes the time to calculate it. It, uh, it uh, doesn't get very useful anymore. So that's why we have this uh, third generator and uh, let's try that one the shortest non optimized now let's see how long that one is 36 that's quite good 34 36 46 so it's still unpredictable when it comes to creating the uh, path it will not be the same every time but it, it, it's fairly uh, good at generating short paths now it works um, like um, like this uh, when starting to execute it looks it queries the graph or graph or queries uh, the graph for any unvisited edges which will be all of the edges it will randomly pick one let's say this one, and it will use uh, an algorithm to get to this edge as fast as possible. And when it executes the path, it will tick off every executed uh, edge and say that these are visited. Now when we arrive at this point here, we will repeat the process and ask the graph for any unvisited edges. Now this list will of course be shorter because this one is gone. So is this one and this one and this one. And of course this one and we will select the randomly and a new random edge uh, perhaps we're going to select this one sorry this one and the shortest path to that one will then be calculated going this way visited that one and then that one and then that one and so it will uh, come down to uh, and the unvisited list will be get shorter and shorter fairly quick so that's why it's uh, quite effective So stop conditions. Now stop condition is a way to tell GraphWalker when to stop generating a path. Uh, you can use different ones and uh, if we want to have a look at them uh, we have reached edge, reached vertex, reached coverage uh, and so on. So the one I have been using so far is the edge coverage uh, which will stop executing when we have visited every edge in the model. Now we can change that one to vertex coverage as well. Uh, it will generate a shorter path typically because uh, it's uh, easier and faster to reach a full coverage of the edges. Uh, for instance in this case where we have uh, two out edges we perhaps don't care about this one as long as we have visited all vertices. Uh, the other ones, typically a uh, reached vertex would be interesting to use. Uh, it means that, uh, let me, sh uh, and then take this one, shopping cart. It means that we will stop generating a path as soon as we have reached the shopping cart vertex. Now it could be a different uh, path uh, depending on the random. Now generator, path generator, but if we use the A star instead we will always get the shortest path to that specific vertex. Now using different generators and uh, stop conditions means that we can generate different kind of tests from, uh, from the graph. 
Now, this one would uh, perhaps be a uh, something similar to a, a smoke test, where we just are interested in creating the shortest path through the system and verify that the server is up running. We can talk to the database. It will provide us with some information that the, the system seems to be okay. Whereas a more functional test would be the uh, full edge coverage uh, test scenario. Uh, we can also change the uh, vertex to um, perhaps uh, the test length. Or rather, let's take the test duration and, and create a test that is more about... Uh, let me just put 10 seconds here and then... And he will go, oh, not the A star. Uh, that was not a good combination. Let's use random. Uh, it was a bad combinations, uh, combination due to the fact that I want to run for 10 seconds, but I specified the sh uh, shortest old, uh, pass or the shortest path through the, through the graph, which is sort of a contradiction. But using the random, uh, it is nice. Uh, it will work. So it, this will go on for 10 seconds. Now, the test case, the proper test case would be that uh, we would run the, the model for, for perhaps 10 hours, which would be a sort, sort of a more non-functional test where we are interested in, in resource leaks or, or any kind of misbehavior just due to the fact that we are running the system uh, persistent and for a very, very long time. Another nice uh, feature is the keyword blocked. Now, imagine that you have a test design that is uh, done, but your system under test is not ready. Uh, let's say that this page, other bought books, is, is not completed. So if you were to run this test, it would actually fail here because the system under test is not ready. Now, a way to avoid this without uh, removing this edge completely with all its in and out edges is to add the keyword blocked. Now if I save this, let me save that to the proper place. Sandbox, there, shopping cart, yes. And let's run an uh, Coverage equals to 100. I have a good test uh, sequence that is uh, substantially shorter than the the one with the other board books. Uh, we can see that it's it's actually not present in this path. Now, if the system under test is fully developed, we can just remove the uh, blocked keyword, save the graph, and rerun this one. And uh, we would have that uh, edge, or oh, sorry, that vertex participating in the test again. Some words on extended finite state machine. Uh, you might have noticed that we have some uh, strange notation here. So the notation is uh, uh, forward slash followed by an assignment, number of books equals to zero. And further down, within square brackets, we have number of books less than or equal to three. Now, it means that GraphWalker has the ability to uh, make edges accessible or not accessible, depending on the evaluation of the conditional expression within the square brackets. The square bracket, uh, you could uh, view that as, as an if statement. So if this evaluates to true, it means that the edge is accessible. So if we're standing here and this evaluates to true, we can walk this way if the generator picks that path. If it evaluates to true, it's not uh, eligible for, for, for the path. Now, everything behind a, a forward slash is uh, it's actually Java code. Uh, and uh, this is a Java variable that will be uh, an integer uh, and it will be incremented uh, every time we uh, execute this uh, edge. 
Now to invoke that from the command line, uh, we have to add the uh, minus x switch, which uh, invokes the extended finite state machine. Now it takes a little bit longer to calculate all the uh, paths, so here it also prints on the standard output the internal state of, uh, of the variable of number of books. Uh, now the main advantage of uh, introducing this sort of data domain into the model is uh, to open and close paths through the model depending on uh, on uh, what has happened earlier in, in the execution. Uh, but be careful, uh, the more complicated you design your test with the data uh, and, uh, and uh, if statements or, or triggers like this or guards, uh, the more complicated your model will get to debug and they will perhaps not behave as, as per design. So use them, but use them carefully. So let's run this uh, model uh, in an actual test. Uh, to do that we need to write code that uh, executes uh, or is being executed by GraphWalker as GraphWalker walks through the, uh, through the model. And uh, let's go to uh, graphwalker.org, click on the demo link, and here we have all the instructions we need to, to have in order to run the test. Now, uh, there are a few requirements than just having Java in order to do this seamlessly. We need Git installed and we also need Maven installed. Now let's start with uh, Git. So we, uh, we get the address here to the repo and this will get our source code for GraphWalker examples. Here it is. And uh, this is the folder. Now, to make it more uh, easier to work with, I will start IntelliJ and uh, load the project into that tool. So I've started IntelliJ and uh, let's open the uh, project. So here we are. Now the model is, this follows the Maven uh, folder structure and under source main resources we have the model folder and there we have the uh, graph, the model that uh, we are going to execute, which, uh, which is in the same model as this one. Now um, an interesting thing is that We have added a plugin here, which is a GraphWalker plugin, which is called the Model Interface Generator, uh, or Generate Interfaces. It will create a class or an interface under the folder in inf, uh, which is a reflection of the model. Now, every unique edge or vertex is represented in this interface, and it means that if the model is updated, uh, this plugin will automatically update this interface and uh, any classes that implements this model, like this one, uh, would actually uh, generate compile time errors. So we need to update our, it, it will help the coder to update the, the implementing uh, class. So now the implementing class is is a class that contains all the methods that are equal to the ones we have in the models like clickbook and e underscore enter base url and, and stuff like that and uh, here we can see how we verify the, the the vertex of the shopping cart the code that uh, the tool that we are using here is uh, from um, selenium or use, we're using the web driver to interact with uh, with the amazon website now um, to run this test, we're using a unit test framework. In this case, it's testng, but uh, could as could be a uh, unit. Uh, it's just for for kicking off the test. So what we do is instantiate GraphWalker using this class model handler, 
uh, we're telling uh, which model we're interested in. We're connecting the model with the class that implements the methods that we need. Uh, in this case, the methods uh, will all be in this Amazon class, which is the one we were at before. Uh, we are using the A star path generator and an edge coverage is, uh, we need 100% and we're going to use the uh, uh, extended finite state machine, which is set to true there. And here the test is started. Now I need to do that and this will kick off the test. So here it is. Now it would be interesting if we could see the model or a reflection of the progress of the test in the actual model. Now we can't talk to YL, but GraphWalker has a web renderer which we can activate. To do that, let's go to the GraphWalker site and go to documentation. Uh, no, not articles. We need to go to how to. Uh, also, there's information here about the Maven plugin I mentioned earlier. Now, we're going to use the web renderer. Uh, I need the GraphWalker property files to be, to, to exist uh, in the root of the test, or the root folder of the test. So let's fetch that one. Uh, save link as. Uh, GraphWalker examples, yes, that's the place. Put it in there. Now, if we look at the project, it showed up there. And we have a property that is set to false. It means GraphWalker, web renderer, run, and change that one to true. Save that file. And uh, we can see that the previous run test executed, and it's done so let's restart that one <laughs> and let's wait for it to start here we have the test executing but let's go to local host 9191 now here's a reflection from GraphWalker it's actually rendering the model the gray vertices uh, are vertices that we already visited. We still have this one to execute. Uh, solid lines, we still have to, they are unvisited. Dotted lines or dotted edges, we already have visited. So we can see that we have this edge, this one, and that one still to, to execute. So we got a fail, failure here for some reason. Let's see what we got here. So other board books, so we have we were looking for a text here. Uh, practical model-based testing a tools approach, and probably we don't have that. So frequent. So they're they're changing the text a bit uh, uh, from time to time. So it's not a big thing. Uh, we still got what we wanted. We saw the test executing. We can actually see in this model here that we still have these three edges to execute. It's pretty neat to see what we have done and what we have not done. It's also reflected in the log folder that's being, or a log file, which is being uh, created as we run the test. So we have information here as well about uh, what we have executed. This uh, concludes my presentation of GraphWalker and uh, model-based testing. Um, just want to pass my experiences made of uh, using GraphWalker my, the past 10 years and uh, as a tool of uh, separating the uh, test design from any code that actually executes the test, the test automation code. It is an excellent method, especially if you are running uh, graphical end-user end-to-end tests or acceptance tests. Um, but I also have used it uh, successfully for for server to server communication, where where you have any sort of workflow you want to mimic. Uh, I even used it for performance tests, where the uh, graph represents the flow through a, uh, a website, for instance. 
So there are many use cases uh, for, for using uh, model-based testing. Uh, but when, when it comes to test automation, the, uh, the greatest benefits are the separation or creating a, uh, an abstraction layer between the uh, test design and uh, the executing or implementing code of the test automation. Uh, it really enables testers to do or be in charge of designing the uh, or what's being tested from the, from the te on the test automation and leaving the implementation part or to to skill the developers um, so i want to thank you for listening to me and uh, happy usage of uh, graphwalker or any other model based testing tool thank you <laughs>